In this test, the specimen was subjected to a one-to-one -one ratio of lateral displacement and rotation, as explained in the loading protocol, in order to induce both shear and torsion stress. The applied displacements and rotations, along with the resulting forces and torsions, can be seen in the graphs on the right. All graphs and plots of imposed movements are active and display the response of the specimen to both types of loading. The general behavior of cracking for combined loading specimens can be explained by the fact that the lateral movement also induced bending forces. Tension and compression zones developed on the faces adjacent to the side of the specimen where cracking initiates. The cracks then spread along the adjacent tension face horizontally until it reaches the other face where it would still experience compression due to bending. The compressive zone will finally arrest the crack. It should be noted that for the one-to-one -one case of combining lateral displacements and rotations, the ultimate cracking pattern shows shear cracks in the same direction on both the front and back of the specimen. This indicates that the shear behavior dominates over the torsional shear in this loading case. This is further supported by the observation that this level of additional torsion did not significantly reduce the lateral shear capacity of the specimen. In contrast, the presence of lateral displacement severely reduced the torsional strength that the pier was capable of producing when compared to those reached in the pure torsion test. This test involved a highly brittle failure, which is shown by a very sharp drop in load carrying capacity of the specimen and was accompanied by the rupturing of several strands of transverse reinforcement.